Hey guys, a somewhat less sick Denver here. Just a heads up, you will most likely see spoilers in this video. These tips are for you guys who have played a while. You most likely have the ins and outs already down and hopefully survived your first year or two in Stardew Valley. So with that being said, let's begin with Denver's five intermediate tips for Stardew Valley. Tip number one, always catching gold starfish. Now you already know fishing is a fun, important part of the game, especially if you're collecting goods for the community center, but fishing can also be a solid source of money in the slower times like during winter. Just a heads up before hitting these locations. Some of these spots might require the iridium fishing rod, which you get from Willy at level six, as well as a fishing skill level of 10 to make sure you can get those casts to get out in the deep water. This first spot is from the thin walkout on the second island of the lake. I've had the most success from just casting downwards and getting a goldfish every single time, including many blown chances for one of the legendary fish, which I'll try to catch later. You can also reach a similar spot in the water from the edge of the lake close to the repairable bridge. One additional spot at the lake is next to the bridge right below the cave. Out at the ocean, there are at least four really great spots. One is by the left pier facing the big rock in the water and just cast out towards the bottom of that rock. One is from the edge of the sand, casting towards the deep water at the mouth of the river. And then the next two are on the east pier. The river has a spot really close to home. It's a great spot, it's right below Leah's house. And then further south, there's, uh, I think there's one, maybe two islands in the river. On one of the islands in the river, you can face upwards. You wanna cast out into the darker blue water. Uh, one more place is in town and it's just south of Jody's house. These are definitely not the only spots to catch goldfish at, but it will at least get you started. Be sure to save those fish if you wanna save some money on fertilizer later. Tip number two, placing sprinklers that will stay. If you're like me, sprinklers were a huge pain when it came to preparing the ground for the incoming crops. While trying to mass produce my crops and using up every bit of a short day to do so, I felt like I spent a lot of my time knocking around sprinklers and putting them back where they needed to go. Problem solved. I say stone, but you can use any of the walking tiles to make this work. Just simply place the stone on the ground and set the sprinkler right on top of it. No more worrying about knocking it around and the only thing that will ever affect the sprinkler is the weeds on your farm getting out of control. Tip number three, building artisan barns. Before I knew about this, I placed artisan and other machines throughout my farm. Now that isn't a terrible idea, but as your farm grows, you will possibly want that space for more crops or ground for animals or slimes or anything else. I keep around one deluxe barn for my animals and then I built two deluxe barns off to the side to house my keg collection and other things. Possibly a third deluxe barn soon, if need be. If you are looking to take your income game to the next level, build a ton of kegs. Uh, Steam user Ch Chang Tao 2005, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, he came up with an awesome design to fit 135 kegs in a single barn. And here also is an alternative if you are looking for something a little easier to empty and, uh, and load and, and it could fit still 115 kegs. A side note, kegs will multiply your fruit sell price, no matter the quality, by three times in the form of wine and it takes just seven days to complete. The best item to drop in the kegs are star fruit and ancient fruit, which leads up to tip number four, accumulating ancient fruit. So if you're far enough in the game, you have the greenhouse, you might be wondering what to fill it with. Ancient fruit is hands down the best choice to fill the greenhouse with if money is your goal, but it's definitely a slow process getting it rolling. First, you will need to get your hands on some ancient fruit seeds. You can do this three ways. The first is to find the ancient seed artifact and turn it in. The Gunther will then give you a seed to plant. Uh, I sold mine. So if you're like me, another way is to get lucky and buy it from the traveling cart, which I was never personally able to find. So the last way is to toss a ton of other plants into the seed maker and just pray that you don't have to wait too long to get the seeds. Uh, it's a very rare chance, but eventually they will drop. So once you get your hands on a seed, it is up to you how you start to multiply them. 
I was kind of a dummy and dropped about 2,000 or more cranberries in the seed maker since I wanted to get as many seeds as possible within a short time period. The other way is to plant your ancient fruit seeds, wait about 28 days, and then drop the fruit in the seed maker and hope for multiple seeds since they can come out in packs of one, two, or three. Keep in mind, if you're not putting them in the greenhouse, get those plants in the ground as soon as possible in the spring. That way they can also grow through the summer and through the fall. Um, also, I personally didn't worry about fertilizing these plants in the greenhouse because I plan on using every single one in the kegs and quality isn't necessary for the kegs. Tip number five, picking a good spot for trees. So maybe you did what I did and put a beautiful orchard on your farm. This is far from a bad idea, but again, if you are worried about space on your farm, there are other places to grow trees, such as almost all over the rest of the town. There are a few spots where you cannot place trees, such as in front of doors. Other than that, pick a spot and get to growing. Just a heads up, personally, uh, from my own experience, fruit is not the greatest money maker, but at this point, you probably aren't worried much about money anyways. I grew a small orchard up near the park and down on the beach to test the different locations, and it worked just as if I had planted them on my farm. When you have accomplished most everything else in the game, planting trees and making the town look beautiful might be perfect for you. All right, I know this isn't the six tips, but one last mini tip for you is just to keep coffee on you um, for rushing around for your crops or through the mines or wherever. I caution you though, once you start getting used to the coffee speed, it's a hard habit to break, pretty much like real life. And that's it. I can't thank you guys enough for the support on my first video ever, the basic 10 tips video. And I honestly wasn't sure if I was even going to make a second video, but you guys gave me that extra push. And I, I just wanted to thank you guys for all your encouragement and kind comments and uh, just for everything. I hope this one was just as enjoyable. And I was wondering if you guys think I should stick to top tips videos or if you guys would maybe like me to do some Let's Play style videos that I can put out much more frequently. Uh, let me know in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe.